Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. Um, today we're going to talk about overwintering brassicas in the polytunnel to plant them out in probably January, February, probably February time. Now these are fairly well on um, and so maybe they're a little bit too big for that purpose but if that's the case I'll find some space in the polytunnel to pot them on um, and it doesn't really matter. Basically the message in this video is if you want a really plentiful supply of veg for the hungry gap it's a really good idea to um, keep on sowing uh, and potting on your brassicas and that's because you know all my ground is full right now um, and so as I'm harvesting stuff over winter by the time I get to sort of February time you know I'm not gonna have enough food to get me all the way through the hungry gap unless I take brassicas out of the polytunnel that I've been growing over winter uh, and get them in the ground so that's always my plan and that also gives you you know really nice early uh, stuff in spring so early calabrese um, and you know early Romanesco cauliflowers early cauliflowers etc etc so I'll show you the range of brassicas that I've got uh, starting with the smallest and then moving on to the biggest um, and I'm actually just potting some on now so I'll show you that as well so these are the smallest plants that I've got and these are Calabrese and the variety is Marathon and then these are cauliflowers all year round and these are dazzling blue kale. Now the dazzling blue kale will probably go to seed in sort of April, May time but it's in, it'll be interesting to answer it's a test basically to see whether something that's planted so late so these are planted in September whether that goes to seed a bit later so like May, June time. Anyway it's a test you only find out by trying. These are the next succession. So these are Ruminesco cauliflowers, six of those. And these are Mitsuri uh, calabrese. So these are really small headed calabrese. So they're perfect for actually planting in the polytunnel beds. Um, and as I say, you just get a, a lovely small head. So uh, they could even go in a container and grow fine. And you probably get a harvest of those in sort of January, February time. Dazzling blue kales, and then these are Duncan, so that's a spring cabbage, and then these are Durham Earlies, another spring cabbage, and then Hungry Gap kale, which hopefully is a kale that doesn't go to seed quite so early on in the season. But I've got loads of hung mature Hungry Gap kale as well, so again. That's really just an experiment. These are my next succession, and these are quite big, straggly, horrible plants. When you're growing these, you think, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with these? Because they look such a mess. But uh, so actually, they turn into something really quite beautiful. They turn into these when you've trimmed the leaves and uh, planted them nice and deep, and they look just perfect. That's one of the amazing things about brassicas. You can kind of neglect them as much as you want and uh, they still turn out just fine. I'm planting these into, I think these are probably eight inch pots and I'm just using my cheapest chips mushroom compost. This, uh, you don't really need to worry too much about what compost you use uh, for brassicas as long as it's got a bit of lime in it. And these are the plants. This is what we're starting with. A nice root ball in here, a bit dry, definitely ready for planting. So we want to take all of these lower leaves off. And leave what looks like a kind of perfect plant. If it doesn't look perfect, just take a leaf off because it doesn't really matter that much. So for example, I don't really need to, but you could take these leaves off as well. There we go. 
So that is kind of a perfect little plant. And then we need to get it down in that part. Something like that. And so it's just going to sit in the pot at the bottom. And then I'll fill it up to about the top of the root ball. We spent mushroom compost. Put a little tiny bit of fertilizer. In this case, this is composted chicken manure with seaweed meal. That's what we'll end up with. Looks kind of perfect. Uh, make sure you uh, check all the leaves for caterpillars, slugs, etc. at this stage. There they all are. Cabbages, spring cabbages. So I hope you like that quick video. Um, are you aware of growing training in grassicus? If so, what types and varieties? What have you had most success with? I've definitely had good success with Calabrese, Romanesco cauliflowers, cauliflowers, spring cabbages. So they're my favourites and you'll see lots more of those if you follow my channel. I'll see you soon.